the First Lady of our Republic, Her Excellency Rachel Ruto, our guest speaker and the daughter of Africa, Pastor Patience Museveni, Governor, Her Excellency Anne Waiguru, and the Chair of the Council of Governors, the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, members of the diplomatic corps who are here, invited guests, members of the National Assembly and the county assemblies. We have the members of judiciary and all protocols observed are being asked to come and pray for the families and then invite our mother of the land. As you may all know that it is not a secret. We have a mother and a prayerful mother in this nation. And for many years, the First Lady, Mama Rachel Ruto, has held many conferences, prayers, and called the nation to pray for many, many issues, and God has answered. And therefore, as we stand here today and recognize our National Assembly and parliamentarians who have decided that you want the women to start, it shows that we have been mentored well. We can clap for our mother of the land. The next one, clap for yourself for hearing from the Lord. And I just want to read so that we can give her time also to come and pray for the nation. I want you to know the agenda of God. The woman is in the center of the agenda of God. There is not one time in any epoch of history there was deliverance without a woman. It is only the highlights are hidden in her story that has not been written yet. And we need to rewrite it. It was in Genesis that the woman was given the name of mother of all that is living. So anything that is living has to depend on the woman. It has to be nurtured by the woman. When it was deliverance time, the times of Moses, there were five women who decided and designed the seasons and the times. And these five women from Jacobed, Miriam, the two midwives, and the daughter of Pharaoh, without them, maybe Moses would not have been there. When it came to entering Canaan, there was another woman called Rahab. She's the one who opened the doors for them to get to Canaan. When Jesus had to come here, she had to be born by a woman, and Mary was there. So when you start to write the story of a family, you cannot remove a woman from it. Revelation also, which is the end of everything, if you find something in Genesis, the beginning, and it is confirmed in Revelation, that's the real thing. And I read for you who a woman is in the agenda of God. Revelation 12, verse 1 to 5. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman, a what? Just look at the other woman and tell them you are a sign from heaven. A woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars uh, on her head. She was pregnant and she cried out as, in, as she was about to give birth. A woman, you will find that many of the times you don't realize God has placed you as a light day and night. That's why God clothed this wonder of heaven or the miracle of heaven. We, he, he, he clothed her 
with the sun which gives life to everything that exists upon the earth. Without the sun, you, everything ends. And therefore, this woman, who is you, is the light that gives life to every creature. So it confirms that you are the mother of all that is living. Then the 12 stars and the moon and the stars means that you must shine in the morning and in the night. Wherever you are, you must shine your light. Never dim your light. If you want to be the sun, be the sun and give the light of the sun. If you want to be the moon, you have the power to release the power of the moon. In fact, the moon is just under your feet. And then the crown of 12 stars means the women are in government. It is a perfect, 12 is the number of gov perfect government of God. And therefore, we hear this woman had a womb and she wanted to birth. As we are here today in this convocation, desirous that we may birth a new dispensation. To rewrite the story that has been written and we want to correct the errors in our families. I want you to stand and now we pray for the families. You pray with understanding that you are the light. The simple things you do in your families, they matter. I can tell you, even our president, His Excellency, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, this woman you see behind her is a light in that, in that office, is a light in that home, is a light for this nation. And therefore, you, wherever you are, just know you are a light. And let us pray for our families. You have the power to be able to bring back that which has been lost. Let's pray. Pray. You pray for the families. You pray for marriages. You pray for your children. You pray everything that Africa will become that what God wanted it to be. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. That you are the one who initiated marriage, family. And Father, you are the father of all creation. The Alpha and the Omega. Our Lord, we have come to you today as mothers, O oh God. Mothers, O oh Jehovah God, in Kenya. Mother in, mothers in Africa. Our Lord and our God, we pray this day. Because you started a good family. Our Lord and our God, we are praying that you restore the dignity of the family. We pray that you strengthen the woman to be able, Father God, to give that tongue that is called the mother tongue to teach the right things to the children. I pray that, Father God, that tongue that the mother has will be able to bring the children closer to God. We pray that they will be able to speak to their husbands. We pray that they will be able to speak to their families. We pray that the women who are standing here, who are the fundamental uh, the substratum of, of, of foundation of our families, that, Father, we will form the foundation. We will be strong pillars, O oh Jehovah God, for our families. We will be able to speak to our families. We will speak to our husbands. We will speak to our brothers. We will speak to our uncles. We will pray that, Father God, the families will start. The marriage was started by you, dear God. And this time, marriage is going through a very difficult and unprecedented times. Separation, divorce, struggles, and pain in the families. Our Father in heaven, didn't you say that a man will leave uh, their parents and go and cleave to the wife and they will make a good family? I pray for love in the families. I pray for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the counsel of the spirit in the family so that the parents will be able to teach their children. The father will be available for the, for, the, for the children. The mother will be available for the children. We pray, oh Jehovah God, that our children, oh dear God, will be obedient. We cover them by the blood of Jesus. We ask for guidance. We pray that the spirit of God will be ingrained in their 
very fabric, oh God, because they are the future of this nation. We love our children and we call them, oh Jehovah God, to divine order today. We pray that our children will not go wayward. We pray that they will not be involved in drug addiction. They will not go, oh God, to the place of immorality. But the righteousness of God shall be found in our children, in our families. Oh my Father, oh my God, we pray that the families will stand because Father God, you ordained it and what you start will surely finish. You have said you have a good plan for the family. The rebranding of demonic agenda that is causing our children to go wayward, families to break, divorces, oh God, foreign philosophies, we come against them in the name of Jesus and we pray that as you ordained it and your counsel shall always stand, we pray that the family will stand today, tomorrow, and even forevermore. For we pray this in Jesus' name with thanksgiving and we say, Amen. you may be seated. Thank you. I've been, I have the honor now to invite Her Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Mama Rachel Ruto. And you know she's our intercessor. You may, she should be standing and celebrating a mother in the land. We say honor and respect your father and mother so that your days may be long. We thank you. Welcome our mother. Bows to the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Pastor Patience Museveni Robogo, First Lady, First Daughter of the Republic of Uganda, and our guest speaker today, Your Excellency Anne Waiguru, Chairperson of the Council of Governors and Governor of Kirinyaga County. Honorable Gladys Boss, Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, all elected leaders and government officials present, High Commissioners and Ambassadors present, members of the clergy present, ladies and the few gentlemen in the room. Good morning. Buana Yesu asifiwe. Ebu tusalimiane, Buana Yesu asifiwe. Thank you, Pastor Patience, for a powerful message on Africa's redemptive purpose, sharing God's vision for the continent and outlining our role as believers. I wish to recognize and appreciate each one of you for making time to attend today's inaugural women's convocation, which is a prelude to the National Prayer Breakfast to be held tomorrow, May 30th, 2024. In March this year, the leaders of the Kenya Parliamentary Prayer Breakfast Group visited me to discuss the possibility of our gathering today. And I thank God that the day you envisioned is now here. I thank the Bunge Fellowship for organizing this first women's convocation and picking a theme of hope that resonates with where we are as a nation. I mentioned today's meeting with our president and he passes his greetings and well wishes to all the leaders present today for upholding our nation in prayer. <laughs> One Saturday morning on April 22nd, 2017, the biggest prayer gathering in South Africa history happened bringing together close to two million people from all over the country. More than 1.7 million people registered online to attend this historic occasion. 
the multiracial crowd spread over more than a kilometer, and the service was relayed onto multiple large screens, which required many kilometers of cabling. The organizer of the meeting, Angus Bacham, said, and I quote, we are going to call upon the Lord to bring justice, peace and hope to our beloved South Africa, end of quote. The people of South Africa were tired of the high rates of crime and incidences of lawlessness. God was the only hope in this crisis that was affecting every citizen. They put their racial and social differences aside and united in prayer. They knew very well that sometimes, if not all times, we need divine intervention for the difficult issues we face in life. When we pray, we are inviting God into our lives and asking for his guidance. It is a way to connect with him and align our hearts with his. Prayer helps us to stay close to God and develop a stronger relationship with him. It gives us clarity, keeps us hopeful for the future, comforts us during difficult moments, and strengthens us to deal with challenging situations. Mother Teresa explained the purpose of prayer, and I quote, prayer is not asking. Prayer is putting oneself in the hands of God and his disposition and listening to his voice in the depth of our hearts. Reverend Teresia Wairimo, one of the most respected spiritual leaders in this nation often says, and I quote, what is born in prayer must be sustained in prayer. She revealed a time she encountered God. She had undertaken 40 days of prayer and fasting, living on the floor by her fireplace, asking God to guide her as she planned for a service at Uhuru Park. God spoke to the people at service and they were blessed with many miracles. Excellencies, ladies. And acknowledge authority over our nation. I encourage all of us to pray for one another and our leaders as an acknowledgement that without God, we cannot do much. Let us continue to pray for families, the fundamental unit of society that is vital for the future of our country. We must work tirelessly to strengthen our families and instill values of integrity, hard work, and the fear of God. Let us also integrate prayer into our daily plans and our workplaces. As the Lord blesses our nation, we shall not fail or forget to give thanks. Let us follow his commands, laws, and decrees because we know that our nation's safety lies in being a God-loving, God-fearing, and God-worshipping people. I encourage all of us to be women and men of prayer, unwavering in our faith and devotion to God with purpose and strength in our relationships with him. I encourage you to be consistent in prayer and maintain a regular prayer life, dedicating time each day to commune with God and intercede for others. The scripture in Philippians chapter six verses, Philippians chapter four verses six to seven says, and I quote, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, end of quote. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to conclude with a prophecy for our nation by Cindy Jacobs, world-renowned prophet, author, and teacher who visited Nairobi in August last year, and I quote, and the Lord says, there is a fierce fight over Kenya. And the Lord says, but know this, 
I'm listening to your prayers. And the Lord says, I desire Kenya to be a prayer-saturated nation. From the smallest villages to the largest cities, the Lord wants to fill it with intercessory prayers every day. And the Lord says, when you fill this nation with prayer, I will fill it with glory. The problems that have plagued the nation for many years will be eliminated. What is that deep conviction that you have in your heart that only God can resolve for us as a nation? Your faith, even if the size of a mustard seed, is your biggest contribution to today's prayer convocation. It is the reason why we put aside our schedules and differences to unite in prayer. The Bible in Psalm 63 verses 1 encourages us to begin our days with prayer. And I quote, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land.